Damn it. Okay, guys, uh, let's start it. Uh, anyway. Hi, Ivan is also here. He'll be interpreting it uh, for his mother, I think, just like Nick said. Okay, guys, uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, joining uh, for this meeting. Um, uh, uh, some of the things uh, which Nixad, Ivan, uh, uh, Sunu, uh, you will be much aware of uh, what we spoke earlier in the last two uh, days. But uh, today we'll be uh, talking more in terms of what is relevant for the seniors mainly. Okay, seniors mainly. Uh, maybe your your uh, your parents or sometime eventually you will also need it. Okay, uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, the. Uh, you know, one of the Russian uh, coaches who said the strength can never be divorced from health. Okay. So if you see most of the seniors as they get older, what happens is I'm just uh, standing up just to show you so you understand better. Uh, as you get older, what happens is, uh, no, 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 put it down, put it down, put it down. We'll just tilt it. As you get older, what happens is the, mainly the chest gets tighter. So, yeah, hold it, hold it. And the chest, chest gets tighter. The biceps also gets tighter. The hip flexor, which is over here, gets tighter. Yeah, and the hamstring gets tighter. So basically, what? So basically, you end up being like that. Actually, going back to your caveman, okay, you know, the gorilla look, you know. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, because all of this, the chest, the biceps, the hip flexor, which is thigh and the hamstring, those are the ones which get tight. And what you lose strength is, you lose strength in the butt, which is the butt, the bum region, the abdominal region, the shoulder and the triceps. So uh, the, uh, if you are, if you're thinking of exercising or doing anything, what it means is the, the chest, biceps, hip flexor and hamstring, we need to do more mobility instead of just thinking of getting stronger and stronger, because if you try to get stronger over there more, you'll actually get tighter more. You understand? So whereas uh, uh, what you need to uh, work on for the strength is mainly the glutes, abs, shoulder and triceps, and more on the mobility for the chest, bicep, hip flexor and hamstring. We'll look into that uh, uh, more. I'll uh, see the lights shining at the back. Okay. So uh, uh, guys, uh, uh, a few of the things which we have to be uh, uh, aware of, okay? Now, I, I just want to show you what is the possibilities, okay? The possibilities, like, okay, this is this lady. This lady is an Indian lady, of course. Uh, she's uh, from Punjab. She's, uh, now she's 102 years old. She uh, holds the world record uh, for uh, 100, uh, 200 meter run for the uh, seniors, actually. Uh, as you can see, her name is Kaur. Uh, now, uh, she started running at the age of 90. Okay? She started exercising at the age of 90. It's not like uh, she started very young and she was always an athlete. None of that short. She, she decided or she wants to do something and she started at the age of 90 and she's been running for the last 10 years and uh, she holds this uh, record. Now, similarly, many of the uh, 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 older athletes is possible, yeah. These three guys who are uh, running right now, they are in their uh, 80s, by the way. They don't look like 80s, they look more like 60s, but uh, they are in their 80s who are uh, doing the run, okay? Now, uh, what I'm trying to say is, yesterday when we spoke about, remember the, the, the fibers, the fast twitch and the aerobic fibers and all those things? So it is still possible. So more, many of these things, the running and being active, even if you're starting late in life, it is still possible to activate them and keep them strong and healthy. Okay, now uh, oh, a few of the assessments are there from which you can make out what, where is the risk that lies for you. Okay, uh, the, now uh, we are going to do it. If you want to do it with us, feel free to do so. Yeah. Uh, so Mads and Kushi are going to do it. Okay, the, the first assessment which we always do with the, uh, with the client, or if you want to do it uh, with your mother or, or your dad and parents and all those things, you can write it down. I'll, I will be sending you the link of this anyway. Okay, uh, what are you doing? Uh, uh, you want to flip it? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, turn it around. Turn it around. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, well, what you need to do is uh, the few of the tests which you have to do is uh, you you have to stand on one leg. That's all. You just stand on one leg. Ideally, between if the person can stand between ten to twenty seconds, just to check because the the biggest issue with the older people is the balance. Yeah, is the, is the balance is a big issue, right? Not so, just people. Sorry. Not just old people. <laughs> Not just old people, yeah. That's the imbalance. Yours is uh, muscular imbalance. Anyway, so this one is to check the balance. On you have to check on both the right and the left. Okay. So so when we check on the right and the left, whereby and and when you're noticing this thing, like for example, that's a uh, check my feet. Yeah? So if if I'm standing on my left foot and I'm struggling over here, for example, if I'm moving a little bit, then that is the time you write down. Okay, you know, he's, uh, even though he's able to do it, but he's still struggling. It's not just the issue of being able to do it for 10 to 20 seconds. It's the issue of what the stability is, how stable the person is. Okay, so that is how uh, the the uh, that is the first uh, thing we check. The the second thing uh, uh, which is very important for anybody anyway, but much more so for older people, is that the the girth around the waist, yeah, should be less than half your height. They get it. So whatever your height, yeah. Let's just say your your height. Uh, for example, I'm just saying if your height, uh, if your waist is uh, say 34, yeah, 34 is your waist. 34. I'm talking in inches right now, yeah. So your height should be more than 68 inches, yeah, because it should be more than double of your waist. If your waist is 38 or 40 or whatever the uh, it is the number is and your height is 70 that means we have a high risk now okay high risk which means that uh, the body fat around the waist is high and uh, uh, which also means if the body fat around the waist is high uh, in effect it is going to affect your mainly the heart your uh, kidneys your liver so when uh, it affects all these three things that means it leads to a metabolic disorder which is eventually going to lead to inflammatory pro problems and the cardio issues. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, second thing we check. Okay, guys, just uh, just uh, uh, want to check with you guys. You know, I'm just uh, asking you, how many uh, when you are sleeping, how many pillows do you use? Anybody? Uh, just just Sunu? head or just, just while sleeping, how many pillows do you use? Two. Two. Okay. So Nexad uses two. Sunu uses two. Madhuri showed uh, three fingers. I don't know how many Purnima, Purnima uses one and Ivan, None. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ivan, do you know how many one? Okay. So as soon as the number is more than one, if, if, if the number is more than one for comfort, it doesn't matter where the pillow is. If it's under the head or on the side, wherever, if it's more than one, that means we have a mobility issue over here. Mobility means a joint issue over here which you do not realize it because you want it for comfort because without that it is hard to sleep, right? So as soon as more than one pillow, which means we have certain mobility issue, which we have to look into, okay, what it is. Because uh, the, the, the biggest thing we lose as we get older is the mobility, yeah? The, uh, the joint mobility and then is the strength and all those things. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit down, Matt. Uh, uh, now my, uh, you know, by the way, we have Kushi today with us. Uh, uh, she's decided to be a model and she's getting paid for it, by the way. She uh, negotiated a pay for this <laughs> to attend the damn lecture. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, hey, what about Aryan? But... Aryan is not interested in money. He's more interested in uh, being on his laptop. <laughs> okay, guys, just want to ask you, uh, yeah, just say yes or no, okay? Uh, do you most of the time have colorful vegetables? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Just remember that. Okay. Uh, colorful vegetables. So, uh, you know, the, the first assessment when I spoke to you was about standing on one leg, you know, one foot, right and left, uh, 10 to 20 seconds. Second assessment, which I was talking about was how many pillows you use. So if you have that more than one, then you write down over there. Okay. And uh, the third uh, one, uh, uh, no, so the second one was actually about the hips to waist hips to waist and the third one was the pillows and uh, now uh, the colorful vegetables you said yes okay so as long as you eat colorful vegetables it all it always helps 
because that means vitamin, minerals, antioxidants, everything uh, you're covering. Okay. And the, the another question, do you exercise every day for 30 minutes? That's no. a difficult question. No. Okay. <laughs> Nexar is <laughs> Nexar. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's uh, Nexar is saying he's eating constantly and exercise. And if I eat regularly <laughs> for half an hour, <laughs> would you consider that an exercise? <laughs> this is one by sub four right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, guys, uh, no, the thing is, uh, uh, you are we are all supposed to, you know, as long as you are alive, that uh, if the movement is happening, that means you are alive. Okay. So that. The movement is very important and minimum of 30, uh, 30 minutes is the bare minimum. Okay. Uh, the fourth assessment, if I have to check with somebody, uh, which is a senior person is uh, to check if he can do plank plank. Uh, you know, the uh, plank doesn't mean just on the cushion. Just do it. Uh, uh, do it at the back over there. So uh, the push up plank or on the elbows, it doesn't matter or on the elbows. It doesn't matter. Okay. The push up plank or push up. Push -up. So now the thing is, uh, what, what I usually say to the uh, person is, we are going to do it for two minutes. And now two minutes is a long time. It's not a short time, right? Now, what, ha uh, what would happen normally happen is around one minute, I would say we are halfway there. Most people can do 45 seconds to one minute. Most people. If I tell them it's a test, they will be able to do. So 45 minutes, uh, 45 seconds to one minute is not bad. To be honest, okay? But when I say it's halfway through and then they give up, that is a sign that we have a mental uh, strength issue also that are you willing to give it a go? Do you understand what I mean? So when you're testing, if you want to test yourself or you test uh, your family or something like that, so that is what uh, we, we, uh, we would check on. The other thing uh, uh, which is very important and you can check with yourself anyway, whenever you, are, you want to do this by yourself is, uh, Mats, you want to do it or I'll tell Krishi. Krishi would be too good at it. Okay, you do it with me. Okay, guys, uh, this is called a get up test. Now, get up test is very important because all that you need to tell, uh, and this was done by uh, Brazilian doctors uh, over a period of time, uh, over, uh, you know, they, they, they did this uh, uh, statistically, by, uh, whenever I say test, which means uh, statistically, okay? It, is, uh, it was done over a period of 15 to 20 years. What uh, they did was uh, they told the, the, the person, older, older people mainly, uh, to lie down, lie down and then stand up. No, no instruction, just stand up. Okay. So now if, if I'm standing up, just watch me. Okay. If I'm standing up like this, see the elbow is touching. Yeah. Then the palm is touching. Yeah. And then the knee is touching. Yeah. And then I'm standing up. Okay. Do you understand that? Now I, 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 I did it three supports, three, three touches. Sometimes the person may be like, if a, if a person has got a back problem or if he's very obese, he would do it like this. See this? He would roll on the side. So elbow down, then the palm, one palm down and then the other palm down, then the knee down and then trying to get up. So that is four to five touches. So I've, I've, so uh, what the, the, uh, the, uh, those doctors realize is the fact that as soon as the person, you start with 10 points, by the way, when you're lying down, you start with 10 points and the more touches you do, the minus you get. So if I do three touches, that's my number is seven. Okay. Could you do it? Uh, like, uh, I'm just searching, just stand up. So if, uh, if you stand up like this, that's 10, basically, you know, you're, you're, you're taking no support. You're just standing up straight. Okay. So, uh, or what, what, uh, they said was any number seven and below. So the uh, mortality in the next 10 years is high in the next 10 years. Okay. So uh, they didn't say now nah, or all those things. It is basically the, uh, the statistically, the mortality rate is higher because well, as soon as you need a lot of support to move and all, that means many of the things are not working properly or, or you're not working at it also. So as, uh, uh, as long as we work at it, and trying to get the things right, then you're okay. So you'll realize uh, when you uh, uh, lose weight a little bit, or if you work on your joints and all this, so you will not need many of those uh, supports. And uh, whenever you have a back problem or anything, you will automatically start taking the support, even to go down or to come up. So going down to the ground and standing up is one of the hardest thing to do 
naturally. And uh, when, if you see kids, they, they're always doing it down, up, down, up, down, up, you know, on the ground, standing up on the ground, standing up a very easy process whereby we struggle with it. Now, as we get older with age and also with our weight. Okay. Uh, the, 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 there are uh, two more things which are mainly for strength, mainly uh, to check the, uh, the uh, standing, standing jump, which is your standing straight, which we would not do it with older athletes. Uh, if, if the person is strong enough, only then we would do it. Otherwise, if a person is overweight or not strong enough, we would not do this test anyway. Okay. This is for a person who is strong. Okay. Who thinks we are, uh, is light and strong. So all that we will say is just jump. Just jump as far as you can. That is all. Okay. So it's like jumping. That is it. Okay. So that is the distance we check. Period. Okay. This is more for people, uh, the, uh, for the older uh, person who wants to improve on his strength and all the, the goals are different. Okay. Okay. Once, uh, let's put it back. Okay. So... Okay. No, no, no. Okay, guys. As you can see, I need specs now to read. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, guys, uh, uh, I wanted to share some content with you. Hold on a sec. Is it done? Yes. Okay. Now, if you see over here, it says uh, mobility, strength, and the third one, uh, the other one, which... Uh, uh, I, I forgot to write. It's called body composition. So uh, you, you understand a Venn diagram, right? Yeah. Venn diagram. Venn diagram is uh, you know these are the ones the uh, the circles whereby what is important and what is cr crisscrossing. Those are the ones. So whenever we do this tests and all this thing, we decide okay yeah this is this falls in the mobility. Uh, this one. This falls in the strength. Uh, the person is lacking in strength. Uh, this was in body composition, which means the hips to waist uh, You know the the waist and the height one, which I said, which was in the, this category, the third one. Okay. So, and then we realize, okay, you know, the, uh, what is more important is if it is uh, two, that means mobility and body composition is much, much more important. So he has to work on the mobility and the body composition, which is two. body composition means fat loss and weight loss. Okay. If the person is not able to uh, do the, uh, the jump or, uh, the balance issue and all those things, uh, the strength and the mobility. So uh, if the person is a five or a six, very rarely we come across a person who's totally one or totally five or totally three. If you see over here, one, five, one is uh, mobility, five is only strength, three is only body composition. Very rarely. It's usually the other crisscrossing one, which we usually come across with. Uh, there's one more thing. Yeah, yeah this is easier. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So this is what I wanted to show you actually. Uh, you see this one. Uh, so the, in the, in the categories, when we look into this, yeah, what should we focus on? Okay. If it's may only one, which means only mobility. Okay. So we, which, which means we hypertrophy yesterday we said, okay, we need to put on a little bit of muscle mass. So those are the exercises which we have to do more, which is the goblet squat and the hip flexor stretch for mobility, because that area, is the one. Remember I said hip flexor gets tight and the butt gets weak as you get older. Yeah. So those are the things. If it is mainly twos, so needs more nutrition and uh, you know, the inefficient exercises, when we say inefficient exercise, it means the exercise which you're not used to doing. For example, yeah, uh, you are uh, used to doing squat. You are used to doing a lunge. You are used to doing a chest press. You are used to doing a push up or a jump and all those things. But when I tell you to do a kettlebell swing, suddenly now you struggle. Okay. Uh, if I tell you to do a Turkish get up, you struggle. Okay. If I tell you to do a chin up, you struggle. So any exercise which is you are inefficient at, yeah, that is the one we work on. So you need to do. Uh, full body exercise. Okay. So that, that is what we need to work on so that you get better at it until it becomes efficient. Once it becomes efficient at it, once you become efficient at that exercise, then we have to change it. Okay. And uh, threes, threes, which means mainly body composition. So the person has a, is a very obese and, uh, and uh, high body fat. So we have to do more uh, of the, uh, the, uh, 
uh, nutrition issues which you have to look into. And uh, we are not experts at it. So, uh, and uh, I've also realized over a period of time that whatever we say uh, about the nutrition, after a while, somebody else comes up with something else and you're totally right or wrong or halfway there. So I don't want to uh, dwell too much on the nutrition part over here. And uh, train alone less often, which means that do not be alone while training. So for the body composition, you need other support other people around you to motivate you to be able to, it is very hard to lose weight or uh, uh, have a lower uh, body fat unless and until you have support from your family, friends, and other people. And if you're training with other, other people, it is higher likelihood that you'll, you'll be able to sustain it for a longer period of time. Okay. If it is only three, which I said is very rare. Okay. Uh, four, I said it is the strength and the body composition. And many of the actually women fall over here. You know, uh, 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 women think they fall in the three, yeah? But actually, as they get older, they, they actually need more strength and, uh, and the body composition, both, because the body fat also goes up after menopause. So uh, when uh, uh, doing a lot of barbell work and the catodal work, which is all compound movement work, actually helps them much, much more. Uh, the strength training is much more important for older women much more important than for older women compared to men because the hormonal uh, changes and everything else is, and deterioration is much faster for women. Okay. Uh, fives are, uh, five, which is to do with purely strength is, uh, yeah, yesterday we said about the sets and reps. So you know about that also. Uh, six is, six is a person who's mainly mobility and strength work. And explore Olympic lifts means uh, uh, yesterday we did the uh, clean and uh, jerk. You saw Aryan do it and Madhuri also do it. Uh, so those kind of uh, movements. They are ex um, an, a sixth person is usually a person who has a prior history of exercise and who is actually very good at most things. So that is why we can uh, go for the Olympic lifts over there. Okay, And seven is a person... Uh, usually who falls in all three. So all three are important. Yeah. So which means uh, equally important, which is to do with the body composition, mobility and strength. And uh, usually we find that the number sevens are the easiest ones because they have actually been doing it for quite some time. So we just have to focus on their mind a little bit. That's all. So they have been doing it before. So it becomes easier for them. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the most ex uh, important exercise. Yeah, guys, do you have any questions? I'm like, I just keep rambling on over here. No, no, you understood everything. Nexad understands everything. <laughs> so very simple diagram, yeah, compared to yeah, yeah. A1 yeah. and A2. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay, uh, uh, Kushi, you're going to do the Turkish get up, okay? Uh, get the uh, okay. get the weight also, okay. Okay, so you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, so no. How, how do we know where we fall, which category? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm telling you. When you do this now, so no, huh. uh, all, all the assessment which I said, you can send it to me, right? Okay. You can always tell me, uh, this is what this is. Okay, then I can tell you. Uh, but I will tell you right now itself. Right now I'm telling you, you fall, you and even uh, Nexad and uh, even Ivan and uh, I don't know his mother, but uh, most of you fall in the uh, uh, mobility and body composition. Okay. Most of you do not, you uh, strength on the lesser priority list, but if I have to uh, uh, put the three things in priority which, as to what is the most important one, the second most and the third one, I would say body composition, mobility and strength. So if I have to devote time or effort more into something, I would say yes. You know what? If you have a joint issue like uh, Nixad has right now, so then I would say yes. Now we have to get the mobility is more important than you than the body composition because your movement itself is getting hampered. Okay. If you do not have an injury or, you know, uh, if you're not gone through an operation and all those things, then I would say body composition first, second mobility and third is the strength. Okay. But as you get better at it, which is the, you will get slowly better at the mobility. You will get slowly better at the body composition. And as you get better at it, the strength comes up, which means the strength uh, has to become a bigger priority. Okay, because your mobility is there because and when you're doing the exercises, you will be having larger, long, a bigger range of movement. So the mobility will happen anyway. So then you have to devote more time to the strength. And then when you start devoting more time to the strength and then mobility, 
and body conversion now is is already there you are already there so it doesn't matter to you as much yeah so then that you are at the best time of your life in terms of because now i'm devoting absolute time because uh, uh, the normally there are two more tests which we have to do normally apart from the standing jump we also do a body weight uh, we also do a body weight test body weight test is whatever your body weight are you able to carry that body weight basically saying okay if i'm 70 i have to hold 35 kilos in each hand and walk can i walk with my own body weight you know in in uh, like ha- half my body weight in each hand so that shows okay you know the person is strong and all those things so it doesn't so we we have we we understand that easier so that that is very rare it doesn't happen with many of the people who are actually training also right now okay okay uh, khushi is just going to do the uh, the turkish get up uh, if i say one exercise you do every day okay yeah if that is a question you know somebody asked me like you know tell me only one exercise i don't need to do i don't want to do anything else i just want to do one exercise period okay and uh, i have only 5 to 10 minutes and that is all i want to do okay so if you do this one exercise every day which is a turkish get up yeah you are covering all the bases the mobility uh, the flexibility the strength balance agility all the bases you are covering by doing this one it is not easy you may have, you may be able to do only the first two could you do it without the weight please you may be able to do only the first one or two so the first step the second step like that okay so i'm just going to tell the step kushi and uh, kushi is going to do it and uh, and i'm going to tell you what each step is for so that you understand that okay okay so kushi uh, kushi is going to demonstrate okay so uh, you lie down on the side and then turn on your back turn on your back okay when you are turning on your back uh, you just uh, 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 this is her right right hand is up the left hand goes normally at uh, where, where is gone naturally okay so the uh, right knee is inside left leg is slightly to the side okay from here cuz she is going to punch the yeah this is a punch towards the ceiling so the hand is straight and she's come up onto her elbow from there onto the palm she must stay there okay now this itself is not easy because it's like a sit up okay now normally we would we are holding a weight but we always start without weight first now from here kushi come on up now pelvis up so you need a lot of core strength and balance over here okay is mainly the bum up so over here we have to make sure that the hand from here to the bottom hand is in a straight line from here kushi take the leg back swipe the so swiping the leg back and staying in the balance over there and then now stay there stay there kushi stay keep your hands straight okay so staying in this position and then standing up straight kushi yes that's it so once you this is now you reached halfway from here now go back slowly to the side and go back the same way the way you came like forward from down and down and to the side okay so then you know uh, when you uh, when you are able to do five on each side all that we need to do is five on each side five on the right five on the left yeah if you cannot do it put it uh, cuz you don't do the weight so if you cannot do it all that you need to do is go on the lie on the, lie on the side push here again okay guys so uh, this is uh, so all that you need to do is go lie on the back and up okay uh, come on mm-hmm. to your elbow and on to your palm okay that's all so you start with this if you are struggling with anything okay you start with this once and then uh, on your elbow push here lie down and then lie down and come to the side so you you just start with this and you know because it's not easy to do the the transition one so uh, on both the sides you keep on practicing every day and eventually after about a week or 10 days go kushi yep fana fana and bum up just just till this place and then bum down and then so and then you do this for a week or 10 days with the bum up and after that you do the go push it and bum up and swipe it like back now from here it will be easier for you come on let's go and then stand up you'll find that the legs and all so once you are able to do the transition with the leg with a bridge and then uh, taking it back then everything else will be easier so uh, guys uh, so what i would suggest is uh, you, know, you have to do uh, five on each side so once you are able to do five on each side without stopping so you uh, you start with one one on each side then two two on each side once you're able to do it then slowly uh, make it up to five on each side once you're able to do five on each side then you start adding weight 
yeah, it doesn't have to be a kettlebell or a dumbbell. It can be anything else. It can be a water bottle or it can be anything you hold in your hand, a, like a book. Okay. So then you start doing with that. And over a period of time, like the way we say the progressive overload, over a period of time, you start adding on more and more weight. Yeah. Uh, Kushi is doing it with five kilos. So guys, uh, normally uh, for uh, this is not, uh, whatever I'm saying is not relevant for the seniors, but uh, normally a good level of strength person is uh, you should be able to do half your body weight in this uh, for other people. Okay. Now let's come to this. Okay. So uh, that uh, if, if we have to talk about one exercise, just do the Turkish get up. If you do the Turkish get up as often as possible, which means like uh, at least of uh, uh, five reps right and left, and then slowly increase the load over a period of time, you'll find that it is covering most bases. Okay. So now guys, uh, 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 so you, you, you have to, first and foremost, you have to go look after the nu nutrition restrictions a little bit. And uh, when I say nutrition the restrictions, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, the Greek warriors were always very famous, you know, the, uh, the Greek and the Roman warriors, uh, they used to eat only once or twice a day. At that time, I'm just saying eat a lot, but only once or twice a day. And uh, Sunni is a doctor here. I know. And that is why I just wanted to, this is a, a Hippocratic, uh, you know, uh, one of the earliest doctors. So I just wanted to quote him. Okay. Okay, look at this. I, I'm not saying we have to do it like this one. Read the whole thing and don't laugh. Obese people and those desiring to lose weight should perform hard work before food. Meals should be taken after exertion while still panting from fatigue. They should moreover only eat once per day, take no baths and walk naked as long as possible. I mean, I, I don't mind the no baths. <laughs> but nobody wants to see an obese person walk naked for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I'm saying is, so, but uh, you know, you understand the gist of it. At that time, in 1471, 470, no, 471, 471, he's talking about intermittent fasting. Now, it's a rage right now. Everybody's saying intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting, you know, you have to do it like that. And he's already saying at that time that you have to eat only once a day, you know, or twice a day. You know, and that too, after doing most of the physical exertions for the day. Yeah. So, uh, so, any, so, uh, understand that where, what we have to do, most of us eat more than necessary anyway. Yeah. Most of us do. And it is hard for us when, uh, I don't know if in the lockdown, how much people are eating nowadays, but, uh, I'm seeing that most people have lost weight simply because they can't eat from outside. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they have to cook their own meals. So it is, uh, uh, getting harder. If you're not lost weight, that means you have by and everybody else at home working for you. Huh? Hey guys, uh, do you have any questions uh, regarding this, regarding what we spoke about? And it, it can be anything. It doesn't uh, uh, matter. You know, uh, for the seniors, I always say, you know, uh, you live long and well, and then you drop dead suddenly. That is it. You know, the way you, know, you live a long life, a quality full of life, you know, and then suddenly you die. That's it. Instead of, you know, just being on the bed for a few years, you know, and then whiling away. You know? Nobody wants to die like that. No. You know, even if it's uh, happening, I'm not talking about an accident victim and all anything on the shot, but uh, nobody wants to be on the uh, bed whereby everybody else has to look after them. You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, guys, any question regarding what we spoke about? I know it can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Man, except I don't want to ask my in-laws. Uh, they're there over here. Yeah. My father-in-law is uh, joined from Banaras. He's probably wondering how you tell a Banarasi not to eat, you know, <laughs> or eat less that way. Tell me, uh, 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 just asking you just like that, okay, what, uh, what worries you most about aging? What worries you most? I mean, if you ever thought about it, that is... Being dependent on others. Being dependent on others for what? Just 
physically. Physically, no. So th that's one thing. You know, that is the if you are exercising, you will never be. If you are exercising and looking after yourself well, you'll never be. And that is the one. You know uh, what we said. You know uh, the Turkish get up, the exercise. Falling unwell and becoming dependent. Yeah, you know the falling the unwell, is, becoming and dependent on others. She said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying that. Bedridden. Turkish, yeah, bedridden. The same thing. Uh, so I'm saying uh, the Turkish get up looks after everything because when you are turning, you're working your obliques and all those things. Yeah, and when you're coming up with the because holding the weight on the hand itself is a balance and strength issue. And then using your abs to stand up and the legs towards the end, you know. So you're doing everything, the whole body, with that movement. And if you keep practicing it, most of the things will go away, you know. And that is one thing most people, you know, that uh, Turkish get up and swing, swing, you know, the kettlebell swing. You can uh, do that uh, the other day. The uh, Madhuri was doing the bag swing with the bag, you know, swinging with the bag. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you do the swing. I, I say, uh, no, normally, uh, I say you have to do 100 swings and five, uh, five uh, on each side, you're good to go. 100 swings means it doesn't have to be together. You can do 10, you do 10, relax, wait for one, one or two minutes, then do it again, wait for one or two minutes, do it again, wait for, because uh, if you do the swings well, you're working on your hips, which is the glutes. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important uh, uh, thing which you need for the strength, you know? And, uh, the abs are also working, so more and shoulder because of the swing. So most of the uh, the the muscles which actually get weaker with age, you're 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 working on those with the swing, and you're doing the Turkish get up, which looks after the mobility, and uh, other issues, you know. So uh, uh, and and uh, if you're eating uh, reasonably well, reasonably well in this little, then you're good. Anything else that worries you? Nothing. Age uh, the, huh? Maybe age or hereditary related uh, diseases that could catch up with you despite you, uh, you know, trying your best to uh, avoid things like that. See, I will tell you something, uh, genetics and everything you know, when one talks about, no, okay, it's in my genes. And, uh, many a time, it's an excuse, according to me. Okay. It's an excuse saying, okay, you know, my dad has got diabetes, my mom has this thing, so I will get it. So forget it. Fuck it, you know, like, you know, I'm going to get it. So I'm, I'm not going to bother about it. That's not the way the body works. You know, the body, as soon as you put stress on it, it starts changing. You know, it starts changing. You see the, you know, you see many of these uh, uh, controlled environment uh, uh, TV series about biggest loser and this and that with the whole transformation of the body change. The whole transformation of the body change happened in the biggest loser simply because it was a very controlled environment. The help was there. Everything was there. That with, with us, it is the fact that we have to do it ourselves, slowly, step by step. And the, the hardest thing to do, according to me, is not the exercise. It's always the, the nutrition is the hardest thing to do. You know, not, uh, because exercise is like, okay, you know, I have to do it for half an hour, one hour. You know, I'm uh, exercise and over with it, you know. But for the nutrition, it's the rest 23 hours in a day or whatever, the, uh, whatever you're awake with. And you're always thinking about choices, you know. Should I eat this or should I eat that? Should I eat this or that? Once you do not have a choice, yeah, then the health becomes actually much easier. Like right now, many people are losing weight simply because they can't eat outside. The choices are limited. Now, if you see, um, I'm just, uh, just saying just like that. Uh, if you see any, uh, uh, I'm saying American uh, English uh, uh, jail, you know, people who are in jail, uh, people uh, who are in the army. In, in India, only the army. I can't even say the police. Uh, but uh, as soon as you see people in the jail, especially the American one, they are extremely big and strong. They are strong people. You know, all jailbirds, you know, all the, you'll, you'll see them big muscular guys and strong guys because if you're not big and muscular over there, so you are somebody else's bitch or, you know, you're, you're always, uh, you know, you're dead, you know, basically. Survival yeah. for them. So. Yeah, survival. So you have to be strong. And the thing is, whatever is being fed to you, you eat. Yeah. Right? Whatever is being fed to you, you eat. And you are, have limited amount of time. They have actually 15 minutes, three times a day to be out. And that those minutes, they spend in exercise. 15 minutes, as much as possible to do those things. So imagine, so, and, and, and the same thing in the uh, defense forces. In India, it's only the defense forces. Yeah, who look 
kind of appealing. Not the cops in Mumbai. Cops are all uh, fat. I mean, they start off when they join, they look very good. Then by the time they are even uh, two or three years into the service, they are all overweight, you know. But if you uh, see the Indian military, looks excellent because they also don't have a choice. They are told what to do and what to eat and what is there. So as soon as that is taken away, it becomes much easier for people. You know, the discipline uh, to do it is hard. But we all ad admire those people, admire or we want to be like them, aspire, but we never put in the effort. That's what I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other question, guys? So we are basically saying uh, reasonable eating and reasonable amount of exercise per day you know, which is 30 minutes, even if you're like yesterday, I was saying Nexad, you know, like even if you're walking for 30 minutes to start with 30 minutes continuously, and then slowly building onto the exercise that itself is good enough. As long as you're not sitting on it, sitting, you are doing something, you know, sitting on lying down, just if you're moving, you're good enough. For my dad in Banaras, I would just say, go up and down his uh, house where it's staying, it's four floors. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Any other question uh, which you have? Something. Yes? Yeah, uh, you know about this uh, weight, uh, how much How much uh, is good for you when you're weight training? Yes. Uh, you can't uh, lift uh, very heavy weights due to some problem or the other. Does yeah. it matter? Does it matter? Like, I mean, if no, I so no. Start so no. Okay. no, 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 it doesn't, I, I will tell you what. First and impo uh, most important thing is that you are doing something, okay? Yeah. You are moving, okay? But we want to make it quality. Once you want to make it quality, yeah? And if your weight in terms of, uh, even if, uh, like for example, uh, if you're saying any exercise, if this is to do with the squat and you're doing it only with the 10 kilo weight all the time, and you're not able to lift 12, if that is the question, then uh, it is the question of programming which is wrong. Okay, if, if you're not able to lift, because if you've been able to do 10 kilo, if so, for, uh, let me put it this way, you know, uh, you know uh, when you start, yeah, you do, if you are able to do 10 kilo, 10 reps, one set, for example, what you should be doing is not 10 reps, you should be doing only five reps, for example, it is easy for you to do five reps, because you're, uh, you can do 10 reps, but you're choosing to do five reps, but you do five reps, often more often okay and you rest more often over a period of time that uh, after a week only do six after weeks seven once you come to ten it is actually you'll feel the same way as you were feeling with the five rep. you know the, the amount of uh, uh, fatigue or the, uh, the amount of uh, effort you would feel and when you take that up to 15 or 20 with the same 10 yeah and then you increase the weight and drop it down to five you know, you have to always play with the sets, uh, sorry, uh, the weight and the reps. You know, uh, uh, three are uh, uh, the uh, resistance, reps, rest, rhythm. These are the things one plays with uh, to, to uh, move with to make it harder or easier. They get it? So uh, uh, if you are uh, resting lesser, it becomes harder. So rest more. So make it easier for yourself. Get the weight to be easy for yourself so no uh, what i would say is whatever the weight you're thinking of and you're not able to go beyond that that weight don't use that weight use a slightly lesser and do much more often when you do much more often and the whole body feels is you know what this is always easy for me then once in a while you make it hard not all the time uh, the the training you no know, sunu so the difference between workout and training workout is like, you know, uh, most of the trainers have this uh, misconception. Workout means, you know, like uh, you have to go out of this on your knees, you know, or as if you're sweating away and then you're, uh, you're walking as if, you know, uh, okay, I had a, a great workout. That is not what is what body wants. It doesn't want to be battered. It wants to be better on a daily basis. So what it is, is you use that amount of weight in the training. You know, when uh, Tendulkar or any uh, sportsman plays every day, he keeps on practicing the same thing, same stroke until it becomes unconscious or subconscious. Very easy for that person, okay? Same thing you do with that weight, which you think is a barrier for you. To make it very easy for yourself in doing that exercise with that weight, get it easier. Do not do higher reps, do lesser reps. 
and do more often. The more often you do with lesser reps and over a period of time, slowly increasing the reps will make it so much easier for you. And eventually the weight will not be an issue. You can lift heavier. You know, everybody can lift eventually. So, you know, yeah, you saw that uh, uh, the video we sent about that 47 kilo woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was lifting 210 kilos, 47, which is like more than four times her body weight on her back. And uh, so uh, you, uh, she was your height, you know, you know, and trying to do that. That is not easy, you know, just keeping that. I was saying, you know, 100 kilos on the back is really hard, but that 210 at 47. Okay. So similarly, you know, uh, you will realize that over a period, uh, don't, don't, you don't have to have, uh, you know what, I need, need to be like this within two months or three months. No, 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 none of that shot. At this age, the most important thing is recovery. You recover well from exercise so that you can exercise. Don't think of it as if, you know, so uh, I'll give you one more example, you know, what uh, uh, the Russians believe in. Yeah. The Russians, you always know, you know, they are very good, they're strong people, extremely strong people. And uh, you see them in wrestling on any, so that they are always, uh, uh, they never go all out. So what, well, uh, I was listening to this Russian uh, 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 great trainer. He was saying, you know what, uh, what is more important? Like uh, over a period of time. So for example, let's just say one week. Okay. So you lift just for example, I'm just saying, okay. So you, uh, you are, you are, you are, whatever you're doing, like uh, you're doing it at say 100%, giving all out and you're, you battered your body basically and you need more rest. You need one or two days rest to do it again. Okay. So let's say you do hundred squats. Okay. And uh, hundred squats, you're fully battered with whatever the amount of weight. Okay. So you need one or two days rest. So you've done maybe two or three times in the week. Okay. Whereas I have done only 30 today and I'm perfectly all right. 30 squats. Okay. But I've done it for seven days. They get it 30 to 50 squats. I do make it it's very easy for me. i have not battered my body, but in terms of my movement and over a period of a month, I have actually done more than you have in terms of movement and everything else. And it is easy for me. This effort is actually make it had, I made it myself it is easy. Okay. So over a period of time, actually I've done more. So whenever you say, let's do this it's easy for me to do this, this movement or weight. And once in a while I go high, not all the time. So the Russians believe that you take it easy most of the time. And just before competition, once or twice you go all out. Otherwise relax. So when we saw their uh, Madri and I went we in uh, Moscow and we went and uh, saw this uh, uh, wrestling uh, class, a wrestling class, uh, there were about 30 people, big class. And we, we just told them, you know, we wanted to sit and have a look. And uh, he was more than happy. And because he knew about Sushil Kumar, the, our, our wrestler, you know, and uh, their res and uh, when I saw the, when he start the class and all of this, uh, they were, uh, a kid was also there and uh, older people are there. And uh, many of the young people are there, big, thin, all, all shapes and sizes. All of them move, were moving nonstop and it was nonstop for one and a half hour. And the first half an hour, which was, he was doing the warm up kind of thing. And everybody was sweating and, and uh, doing the movements and everything else. I, uh, when I was looking at him uh, within 10 minutes, I was saying, you know what? Uh, we couldn't have lasted 10 minutes over here, 10 minutes of their movement. And they, it was all easy. So because they do it so regularly and even the wrestling, which they were doing, they were not going aggressively at each other. They were just doing playfully, throwing the person down, playfully lifting. So the movement becomes very easy for them. And and then they can do it so much more often. So no, I, I hope it answers your question uh, of yeah. the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of uh, uh, like, you know, what I'm trying to say is enjoy that uh, the, the weight by getting it lesser and doing it more often mm -hmm. so that you never have this issue about the weight later no. on. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go up and down, up and down all the time. Okay. Yeah. Anything else guys? Good. So I must say Sunu and Nigzad, now you're part of the family, okay? Because you two are the only brave souls who are there. I always knew, you know, everybody, when I came to Bombay, you know, like, you know, because I was with uh, Nigzad is, uh, you know, the Gamdivi Center is uh, Nigzad's uh, dad. And the, 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 the day I arrived in Mumbai, I arrived in, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, first of May, what, 13 years ago, in 2007. 
and from the airport i went to i went home uh, to valkeshwar and straight away went to uh, to meet his dad first day yeah first day in bombay first person i meet and uh, i said i know this is the amount i can afford and this is the place and all this at that time they were staying on slater road he said don't worry is done no issues you know that uh, the exact dad agreed with me you know, done this uh, is all done you know so and you know what after that i said oh, it's so easy to rent a place over here for worldly <laughs> it took me 5 years ah. to get a place over you know like i wanted to we were looking look 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 that thing <laughs> mumbai is full of problems except if you know nixad stan ah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys okay thank you thank you thank you for being there we, uh, uh, tomorrow is uh, kids teenage teenage kids if nixad you ever plan to have kids you know be there tomorrow <laughs> okay guys okay bye bye good night bye. have a great day bye, bye ivan bye bye guys thank you thank you bye ivan bye bye thank you sorry bye. the net bye. connection just messed up at the end yeah yeah, yeah.